Hey, and welcome to Spouse Antics. 3UZ, refresh part deux. In this episode, we are looking at the heads. We are stripping them down, cleaning them, off to the machine shop, restringing, banging them back on. Like, so don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so I'm back in the workshop, and it's late night, and I am working on cylinder heads. You saw me take them off the other day. So the plan is, is to unstring all the valves, turn it around, there we go. So we're going to pull all the valves out, clean all the faces. Get behind the valves, clean all behind the valves, get any carbon out, mainly on the exhaust, inlets are good. Uh, then clean all the buckets behind it, label up all the, like I've done here, these are all the valves out the other head, is what I've done earlier. Label all the valves up, all the springs, all the keepers, uh, and then I'm going to degrease it, jet wash it, and then get them ready to head off to the machine shop to get skimmed. Then as soon as they're skimmed, they'll come back here and we will re-shring them all in reverse order. Uh, there's an absolute shit ton of valves on these. Uh, so let's get to it. We'll start off by unstringing the valves. I'll share us through the first couple and then uh, we'll just crack on. So on the back of the head, you've got the valve retainer and the valve. And this is my valve tool, C-clamp style. So I'm just going to take one out. Let's go for the inlet on this end. It goes over the valve. Quick clamp. Ah. And then I've got a little magnetic screwdriver, like this. And one keeper, two keepers. Keep them safe. Undo this. Off comes the spring. And then push out the valve. And there we go. One valve. Now, because this engine's been sat a little bit around a bit, if you can see that, there's just a little bit of debris and dust and stuff. Actually, these valves have had quite a nice three-way angle job uh, from the factory. And they're actually, it's actually pretty nice stuff. It's actually done really well. Quite impressed with the, the uh, Toyota Lexus gear compared to the old Volkswagen stuff. It's uh, a lot better. And the old Yank stuff. That old Chevy small block we built last winter. So I'm now gonna get, get a cardboard, label it up, and I'll just start unstringing all of these in there. Right, there. That's the valve seal. Now that's the little bugger. That's the main reason I pulled these heads is to do these valve seals. Uh, and while I was there, I thought I'd just do all the valves and stuff. Uh, they're just a bit hard. All the seals on this were a little bit hard and a bit dry, so I just thought, why not while we're there? Uh, okay. Action. Right, so that's the head tore down. Now you can see all those valve seals are in there and all that goop and crust. Now to remove the valve seals, I've got this very fancy homemade tool, which is a pair of round known pliers, like so, which I bent the ends. And I'll show you, I hooked them underneath this valve like that underneath the, the valve seals, sorry. And then I get a big screwdriver like this. You wedge that 
in between the gap and then you can use that as a pry to lift them off. Works a treat. Over here you can see there's the left bank, all the valves, underneath there's all the springs all in order. All the collets and keepers and then that's the right hand side and then all the springs as well. So they're all in order, in pistons, orientated, front and up, right hand, left, inside, inlets, uh, inlet valves, exhaust valves, vice versa. So when I go to put these back together, everything goes back in the same place, which is very important. Right, let's pop one of these valve seats out. Uh, why do I keep saying valve seats? One of these seals. Valve stem seals. So, grips underneath. Screwdriver on the ply. If you can see that. I'll do my round, see if I can do it lefty. Do this one. Plies underneath. Screwdriver on the edge. And pop. That she comes. Simple as that. Right, just got to do that another. 15 times. Next step is cleaning the valves. Here is one I've just done. Let's see if we can get a focus on that. All nice and spanky. And here is one that I haven't done. So we're just taking off all that horrible carbon. Let's zoom out. I think you can probably see the difference there. Now, there's loads of these to do. So the way I do them is I take my valve. I take it over to my wire wheel. It's a very labour intensive process, but those are done. I'm now working my way down these ones. Right, well that was a bit of a mission. But look what we got now. Oh, nice clean and tidy ports. They're a bit wet because I've been there. Uh... There's a couple of little teeny bits of carbon which I just can't really get to. But like compared to what it was, you know, how far do you go with this thing? And then that there's from this side. That's the exhaust ports. A little clean and lovely. I might con considering porting them to the. But there you go. Look. Quite nice flowing heads these. No wonder they're well, you know, used quite a bit. So there we go. We'll uh, take them over to the head shop tomorrow. Now, one thing I will say where I've cocked up. Which I didn't realise. After I sprayed it with degrease. And uh, still a bit of dirt in there, but do that after it's had its skim. Uh, down in there, underneath these springs. So underneath the spring is a little washer. And that's to stop the steel biting into the aluminium. Now I forgot to take them out before I cleaned it. And so I have now jet washed. I've got 26 remaining. Right, that's that head all done. Uh, that's 
Got to go and find these washers. Somewhere around the car park. <laughs> Off to the head shop tomorrow with these bad boys. Get them skimmed. Head gases are coming from America. Easiest, cheapest place to get them. Rock Auto. Uh, yeah. So, uh, see you in a bit. Okay. Quick chat about port matching. What is it and why do we do it? So as you can see on this one, here's one I made earlier. They have been opened up a little bit, smoothed out and cleaned. Now the reason for doing this is basically a smooth transition. So you can see before and after. So what we've got here is a man of, uh, New exhaust manifold. Okay, so we've got two ports here. Now, what we want to know is whether these exhaust ports match up nicely with the actual exhaust headers. And the best way to do that is to use the gasket you're going to use. For me, I'm using this one. Now, first of all, if you can see on the gasket that the gasket's bigger than the holes, and that's fine, it's a little bit offset there. So, looking at that, you can see sort of vaguely how they are. Now, if we transfer that across, now we can see on here, extra material as well, where they don't match. That one particularly. Jesus. Right, so the first point of call is to get the gasket to match the head. So... We'll mark through the gasket on the head what we want. We'll then transfer that across onto the manifold and clearance that. So all three match and you're using the gasket as your template across the two. And in true blue Peter Passion, here's one I made earlier. So here's the gasket. You can see how the gasket fits nicely, perfectly around the ports. And I've also taken out quite a bit of material around it just to make it flow better. And then this is the corresponding manifold. So we take this off, turn it around, flip it on there. A bit tricky to line up with one hand. And line it all up. And there we can see that I've also matched the exhaust manifolds are matched in with the gaskets, which are matched in with the heads. And now we'll have a true transition through the head, through the gasket, and into the exhaust manifold. That way there's no step down. If you have a big step down or a big change, you are going to affect the flow. You're going to cause low and high pressure areas, which makes the air swirl. This way we get it bang on. So that one's all done. And this one obviously needs doing. So I'm basically matching the heads to the gaskets. And then making the gaskets fit these manifolds, which basically no, most of them just need cutting around the edges. So we'll start off by marking up this gasket. So I've transferred those markings. Now I'm just going to start dremeling them out. Tool of choice. A decent air dremel with a decent metal bit. I've got the snap-on ones in here. A good thing. They last forever, especially in aluminium. Uh, right. Let's crack on. There we go. It's no, uh, it's no CNC 
Port action, it's a home doggle, but you know. For what I need, this is gonna be more than that. Boom. Uh, we're ready for the head shop. So I'm gonna take them over now. Just a quick message. You're into 3UZ old things, modernizing stuff. So hit that subscribe button and see more. Back to the action. We are still working on cylinder heads. They are back from the machine shop. Uh, we've had the faces just touched to reface them. You've seen me take all the valves out and you've seen me clean all the heads. Here's one that's already been strung. And the valves are all in. So let's talk you through the process of taking this head straight from the shop and re-stringing it. There's our valves. Valve seals. And then the other bits and bobs we need. Right, let's crack on. I'll talk you for the first one, and I'll time lapse the rest. Take that one out of the way. Right, here's our head. First things first, is lap it, lapping these valve seats in. There's all my valves. Now I've got them all labelled up. I'm going to work my way down the line. So, okay, so we'll start with one port. I'm going to do all of one. And I'll do that one and then we'll time lapse the rest. Let's, let's work from this end. So first from the arrow, which is the back end. So furthest away inlet. Just going to put a little drop of oil. Down the, all of the guides because they're a bit dry because they've obviously been cleaned and jet washed and all kinds of stuff. There's one, two, three, four. Now I'm just going to work one cylinder at a time so I don't get too confused. First thing I do is just clean the valves off with a bit of braking clutch. And that is so that the sticky stick will stick. That's my sticker, sucker. Some very fine grinding paste. Oh. As we are just kissing the seals, we're not really grinding cutting them in we're just lap yeah we're just lapping these in we're not refacing and what we're looking for is just a nice this one sounds pretty good actually you can sort of actually when you've done a few you can hear sort of a note change as the seat gets nice and smooth. Excuse the hiccups. Just had a cheese sandwich. <laughs> See if it's absolutely ruined me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So there's a few little dark spots, just little imperfections, but the seat looks lovely. So we're all good. Put some breaking clutch clean on that and just clean because you want to get all of that cutting compound off now. You don't want to leave any of that in the seat, so that will do some damage to the guides. So that one's all lovely. Pop that back in. 
Next up, exhaust. Smear a bit of paste around where the valve seats. Pop it in. Sucker on. Now there are more effective tools to do this, but for me, I just don't do it enough to bother investing in the quicker tools. Plus, as I said, I, uh, I don't, I'm not really going particularly hard here. We're more just cleaning that face than, it's more of a face clean than a, uh, And a cut. Right, now we've got our first inlet and exhaust done. Won't bother doing the other two yet. We'll uh, string those, string them up. And uh, show you the time lapse of the rest. So, I'm gonna pop these out quickly because we need to put the uh, seals in. Now, I've had a bit of fun with the seals on these, not going to lie. The exhaust seals have been absolutely fine. The inlet seals have been an absolute bastard. So let's have a look. Here's the seals. have got two types, inlet and outlet. You can tell by the colour of the spring on the top. They're slightly different sizes. And they go right down on these little end of these little valve guides so we've got to drop them in and then push them down and they're quite tight so the first thing i do is lube a bit of engine oil Whenever I'm assembling something like this, it can never go wrong. The more engine oil, the better, in some respects. Just to lube everything as it goes in. So the key is to find something that has the right diameter. Now I found for the exhaust valves, this one, nope. This one sits in there absolutely perfect. So let's pop that in. And that's the exhaust side. That's that one. And for the inlet, I found that the back of a uh, three eighth socket seems to work a trap. So we'll tap that in. So they're all in, as you can see. So let's pop this back this way a bit. Keep an eye on it. So inlet in one side. Now once the valve guide seals are in, they sort of hold the valve stems in place. So the valves don't fall out. Little steel washers, 
which stop the springs wearing through the aluminium heads. And inlet on that side, exhaust on that side. Give them a quick wipe down. I shouldn't get anything on them, but you know, I'll clean them anyway, but clean, clean, clean. Next up, keep it on top. And now we need to just compress. And that's just and now you can just see the valve stem poking out through the collet. Now we just need to drop in. These two little retain. I use a little magnetic screwdriver. If you can see that, well, the focus very well on. Very well on this. I just use them to drop them in into that little ledge that you took them out of. One side. Two side. Can be a bit fiddly. That's in. And then just release the tension. And then same again on the other side. Number one, and number two. First one in. Magnetic screwdriver is an absolute teeny little bank. It's an absolute god save on this. In, done, boom. Oh no, that one didn't quite seat properly. Let's give it another push. There you go. And that's in. And that's done. Sometimes it's nice just to give them a little gentle tap tap. And that is in now, so flip it up. These two valves in. Now to go down and do all the rest. Let's crack on. Wow, here we go. That was a bit of a mission. I think the time lapse battery died on me there, but you got the gist. And I have two heads. Skimmed, lapped, cleaned, tidied, restrung, ready to go. Hey, well, that's the end of part two. Uh, next week, we'll be dropping video number three, where we'll be banging the engine back together and uh, putting on the new shiny brown bits. Sneak preview down there. Sweet. Don't forget, like, subscribe. Enjoy.